Yo, so um, today I decided to show you how to approach creating those fine fabrics that you see on, um, you know, like uh, clothes or ski masks, stuff like that, uh, on textiles. Um, and I still don't know how to properly do it. I've always wondered how to achieve a look similar to it. And I still don't know. Yeah, so don't you worry about that. But it's what I'm using. Uh, it gets the job done um, for certain stuff. So it all depends on lighting, what kind of object you want to uh, use it on and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so let's start in Daz. I got my model ready with a base T-pose. And the animation is just 30 frames. Um, and I exported my final pose already. Export uh, Daz. Check OBJ. That's my final pose. I'll just override it for yeah, doesn't matter. Um, those are my settings for regular C4D import. Um, use surface names, uh, write surfaces on original. So um, the directory stands where the materials are actually saved. So you still have your bump and normals and stuff. Um, yeah, write material library checked, but quote pass containing spaces unchecked. Uh, if you check that, sometimes the C4D import won't show every material. Some just show up with no info at all and just end up being black. So make sure to uncheck that. <clears throat> and yeah, so now I'll get it ready for uh, Marvelous. So I'll export the T-pose uh, for MD. That's the base pose. And for this one, I'll just um, leave right surfaces unchecked. Oh, right, I missed something, uh, because I will be deleting the eyelashes and the fiber brows, so that isn't uh, intersecting or anything with the Marvelous Designer Simulation. Sometimes you get uh, a bit of problems going on, even with the lower particle distance. So I'll just uh, override it, right surface is unchecked, because I won't need my materials inside uh, Marvelous. And then I'll export it. Export it as MDD file, which is the animation animation process. I believe you only have the option to export MDD if you own Animate 2. Uh, yeah, so I'll overwrite that. If you don't have Animate 2, you can export as MDD, and that's necessary, I guess. <clears throat> Make sure scale was set to Death Studio as it is on your OBJ export. If scales are mismatching, the vertex count obviously mismatches as well. I'll just uh, save it, undo it, so they are still there, and I'll delete my avatar, import obj, and yeah, let me just uh, real quick uh, get rid of my previous exports for the previous run, because we won't be needing that, and we won't be needing this. Start fresh, and yeah, just import my uh, base pose, load it. Okay, so we got our base model inside uh, Marvelous now, and I'll be creating a base mask, like nothing too fancy, nothing too crazy. Um, probably won't be even looking as clean as it could be, uh, but yeah, this is not about Marvelous, it's rather about the texturing part inside Cinema 4D with Octane. So I'll do something like this, and then probably curve it out at the end. So I'll do, uh, I'll do this, and this, uh, this, something like this. I'm not sure if it's uh, wide enough. Like I said, it won't be too clean, um, but that that doesn't matter. Oh, the fabric is black already, um, and particle. Thickness, oh, thickness is set to 2.5. I'll just do 0.5 for now. And, oh, my bad. I shouldn't have simulated. And I'll just check the scale. It probably needs to be bigger. But, yeah, it needs to be a bit broader. 
So I'll just um, select those two points and drag them out. Oh, my bad. I'll select those points and drag them out and then maybe adjust this one to around something like this. Maybe make this a uh, curve point. Uh, this is not what I was hoping for. Might be this too. I mean, this should be fine for now. So let's check it again. See if it's see if it's uh, broad, broad enough. Maybe should be actually yeah. So I'll um, make sure to select this line by having the uh, Edit Pattern tool selected. Right click on it, click Unfold. And then I'll make sure to go Internal Polygon Line and draw one up in the middle. Hit Enter. And I'll, whoops, I'll move the mesh back a bit. Something like this should be fine. So it's lined up in the middle. Uh, center it up like this and then we'll hit a uh, folder arrangement and make sure that this goes back a bit and this as well it doesn't matter if it's intersecting now yeah actually it should be broader probably so you could do four pa four parts sewing with two parts at the back and two parts at the front um so you reduce uh, intersecting, but for what we're trying to do, this will be fine. What was it? I think I'll do 40 probably, 40, 41.8. And 41.8 or around there on this side as well. 41.6, that's fine. This should be good. So I'll do segment sewing and Wait, hold up. First, I'll get rid of this line and I'll segment sew this to this and this to this, the bottom part to this. And now we should be good. Maybe select the fabric again and set the particle distance to 10 already and simulate it. See what's happening. Yeah, this is fine for now. You see there's some problems at the eyes. We'll just drag this out and it should be be fine. We'll just move this back a bit. I'll make sure it's centered a bit. This should be should be good. So now I'll do the holds and internal ellipse and just place it how I would think it needs to go. You could solve this in a better way by just uh, by making sure that you do this at the beginning already while doing the pattern so it all lines up. But for what we're trying to achieve right now this is necessary since this isn't uh, really a marvelous tutorial just on how you could approach something like this. So I'll cut it and see where we stand. Simulate it again. Yeah, I think this is fine. So I'll drag this out a bit. And then I'll do the same for the eyes. So create an eye hole. Yeah, this should probably already be fine placement wise. Um, yeah, I'll just try and see what's happening. I'll cut it and delete it. Nah, it's not fine. 
So we should probably go a bit lower to the right. Try again. Even more. Cut it. Oh, my bad. I deleted it. Cut this. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, and copy this. And make sure that you line it up to the mouth. Probably like this. Cut it. See where we stand. See where we stand on this. Yeah, this is good. We'll go ahead with this. And I plan on having the top part a bit uh, more a bit wrinkly or not wrinkly. I plan on not having the bottom part uh, wrinkly and have that one like clean. So I'll delete this point. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah. And select the bottom part and just make sure that it's a bit. Also, I'll uh, center this just for my sake. So it's right here. And then I'll make this even a bit longer since we're trying to get it to be elastic. Yeah. So now I'll do internal lines again. Probably start around here and then see where we end up. Probably like this and this. Where do we end up there? Hit enter. Now we need to go higher. So I'll probably do it reverse. Do it like this. Yeah, this should be fine. So I'll wait, hold up. This shouldn't be fine. We want it to be at the same height. So I'll start there and go there and end there again. Hit enter again. Yeah, this seems to be good for what we're going for. So I'll select that line and hit cut. No, I don't hit cut. I hit cut and sew. Uh, so, so they are connected. Simulate again, still connected. So now I'll select this one and go shrink it weft 70, maybe. Maybe 50. Yeah, and then I'll hit an internal line again, like this, maybe. And right click it again, cut and sew. Simulate. This seems to be fine for what we're going for. Maybe we'll move the top part, the top point. Or we'll move, yeah, no. Uh, let's, let's see what happens if we go this route. Yeah, this seems to be good for what we're going for. Maybe. Maybe, just maybe. Drag this down a bit. And resim. We could, of course, also uh, retopologize in Marvelous. Or now retopologize subdivide in Marvelous. Um, but for now, I'll just hit uh, remesh for all of them. Did it do? Did it do it for all of them? No, it didn't. So I'll remesh it for all of them. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So now we'll move on to our animation. We could also, maybe let's try moving the eyes a bit higher. Like this. No, that's too high. Like this. Yeah, this seems fine. 
Oh yeah, right. Before we go into uh, simulating the animation, let's uh, oh let's head into our fabric and hit thickness 2.5. Oh, it's not updating. Oh, caps lock is on. That's why 2.5. This seems good. So there's a bit of an error with our internal line at the... Oh, is there? No, I don't think there is. It just seems to look that way. Yeah, like this. We got a slight few intersecting errors, but it's fine since we're rendering out a still image. Um, maybe we go and try just 120. No, we don't. Yeah, redo it. And let's select those. Oh, select those. Those. And. Offset as internal line. Four seems to be fine, I think. And cut and sew. So we select uh, those. And just move them somewhere else for now. And simulate. Okay. So now we got our things sewn onto here, like this. And now we import our earlier exported MDD file, import MDD cache, and import that. Make sure that uh, if you run with the default settings, you should also have the Z inverted. I think that's default as well. If you don't invert it, then it fucks up your animation, or basically it doesn't do it at all. So import it, and then we go at the top right, we go into animation, and then we just uh, select record. Yeah, that's it. Go into simulation again and simulate this, like that. The mouth is too. The mouth is covering the lips, which we don't necessarily want. So I could either select this and this, and then just do this. Maybe I'm not sure if this would work out for this, or if I need to do undo my fabric. Yeah, now we have some glitches going on. I should probably undo the sim and undo the mouth. Place it a bit upper. But we'll just go for it. Yeah, I mean, we're not trying to achieve anything crazy here. Um, so let's make sure that maybe to crank the particle distance down to five for the final sim. Yeah, it's still glitching a bit, but what are you gonna do? I think we're still good, good to go. So I could probably do no nah, it keeps reverting so we'll just we'll just go with it it's fine there's no time for uh, cleaning it up he says and does proceed to clean up even more yeah it's it's fine it'll work so now I'll just um, just some 
I'll now I just add some default top stitches. Uh, delete those, delete those, and select those, and those. No, those I would don't want. Uh, select uh, those. This. Now. This. 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 Those. This one. And maybe our main mask. Yeah, like that maybe. Um, nothing too crazy. Just for some extra detail. And now it's on to exporting this. Before that, we'll check our UV editor. And I'll just align this. I could also place them somewhere else, but this is just fine. Um, so I'll size it up, make sure it fits our UV tile. And then it's on to exporting. So all of this is remeshed, good. So it's quads, and then we'll export a few versions. So we'll export, um, we'll export MD, export um, mask, thick. Make sure thick is selected and multiple objects for now. And unified texture, unified UV coordinates, unified, uh, my size is 4K. Um, and I'll hit OK. It's exporting the OBJ. And now I'll do this again. Export OBJ selected um, MDE mask thick multiple. Wait, did we go multiple? I think we did. So we'll go a uh, single object. Wait, no, we don't need this. Never mind. Um, export OBJ MDE mask thin. So let's do thin. And we got a, quite a few errors going on now because of the sewing and the removed thickness, but that's fine. I'm not even sure if we will need this. This is just a backup for what we're going to do in ZBrush. So let's do this. Export the OBJ. Uh, so now we'll jump into uh, Cinema. I already have this prepared. Um, I'll just import the mask. Um, that's MD. And let's go with the yeah with a thick one, and do by identical name, even though it doesn't. Doesn't change too much for this one, I think. And now I'll get multiple objects um, like this, and those are our base uh, base mask shapes. And I'll copy those into a new scene, and then I'll combine them, connect objects, and delete. I'll export it as an OBJ. Do that into for ZBrush mask thick and head into ZBrush. Um, open a file to go to the ZBrush section like this and drag it in. Make sure to click edit object or hit the T button and for you, if the mask shows up like this is empty, this being empty and all glitched out, you can fix that under display properties uh, double. That'll make sure that you see all the everything from the model. And now we'll just head into geometry at the right side and hit Z remesh. You can see we have 37,000 points roughly. Um, and I'll remesh with a target count of five.
And now we got 14,000 points. Um, you know, uh, the hair object will be placed upon every uh, quad. And we can play around. So I'll double it and hit uh, zero mesh again. And now we got 48,000. That means 48,000 individual hairs. I'll go, I'll double it again one more time. Now we have 120,000. I think that's too much. So I'll go with a target count of 48, 90, let's do 70 maybe. So we're at 93,000. I think we could work with that. You could go lower. So this just means individual hairs like on every quad. Um, yeah, let's, I'll try it with 93. Uh, see how it goes. Um, export that, ZBrush export, mask 93. Okay, poly. All right. Let's head into Cinema, close this project. We don't need it. Um, I'll convert this material real quick, convert it, and delete the seam material, or the, the stitch material. Delete this and group those. Uh, stitches and group this. Mask. So you have all these individual shapes. Bottom. Top. All right, and I'll delete this material and I'll just drag this one up there. I'll make sure that the specular is white and crank the roughness down a bit. Well, maybe not keep it. I'll refresh it real quick. Uh, make sure that my GPUs are okay. We got 69. Yeah, that's fine. I just don't want them to be uh, get too hot uh, with the fan speed. Um, then I'll put a subdivision surface in the mask to make smooth it out and call this mask. That's fine for now. And just for the beginning, I'll Get a bit of a better material, so shout out to Travis Davids. Um, I'm using his uh, displacement maps once again. I'll go into uh, fabric and choose what do we choose for this? Uh, probably one from the first pack, but I'll go with this one for now. Put that into bump and transform it. See how it goes with this one. Yeah, this seems uh, good for now. And then we'll bring in our recently exported um, ZBrush file, which would be this one. Uh, yeah, it's just one object, no material, we don't need that. So we got this and let's hit uh, Shift C and go access center and execute it and maybe make it a bit thicker maybe so it engulfs our base map uh, base mask a bit more like this maybe and then just hide this and go to simulate hair object add hair and now as you can see uh, 93,000 hairs are being um, generated so I'll change the length to 0 0.3 maybe 0 0.3, let's see if that's good. Go into the material and under thickness, I'll do 0 0.01. And under this, I'll go 0 0.001. So those are really fine strands. This should be good for now. 
and I'll stop viewport for now and go under make sure it's just 10 frames we don't need you could for this step you could create an um, hair tag hair collider tag so those hairs are interacting with the geometry beneath it um, but for what I'm going for that isn't uh, necessarily less necessarily needed and just cranks up your calculation time and sometimes the calculation even results in errors that you don't necessarily want so I'm just not doing it. I'll go into hair and cache it, calculate it. It's now calculating those 9,000 uh, 93,000 uh, hairs falling. So now they're just falling. I'll go into group and refresh it again. And now you, uh, you can see that those hairs are all falling down. Um, which is uh, just fine um, because we'll now go into the settings but first I'll create an octane glossy and put that onto the hair object and crank up the roughness so it's not too reflective so you can see you can um, see what's going on when you change the values of this one so I'll go into scale and activate that scale 100 so it varies between Let's do 150 and maybe uh, 40. Mm, maybe 10. Let's just see where we end up. Um, I'll activate Frizz. You can see. Uh, let's do let's 50. Now it's frizzling out a bit, so it's a bit more accurate. Let's go 100 and see what that brings us. Seems fine for now, so let's go into uh, twist. Let's twist these hairs, make it 70 maybe. You can play around with, so, with those settings, so it's just all about um, what you want at the end. And bend it, bend it as well make it 50 maybe and play around let's see if we can go local maybe like that we could also go to frame uh, zero so they did not fall on frame zero so it's up to you on what you want to do but for now it doesn't really matter too much and I'll just keep it like this. Maybe I'll redo the length and then just recalculate or play around more with the length modifier. I do 100. And you can also go into maybe uh, clump. Clumping those hairs together if that's what you're going for. Let's do maybe 2%. And yeah, what what like let's see what wave does for us. Probably not too much. Let's go 100. See if it's drastic. Okay, yeah, I see that. Um, we could keep it like this. Maybe I'm not too sure. I mean, yeah, let's let's keep it at maybe 70. But instead, we increase the hair length to, uh, let's empty the cache and let's increase the hair length to 4.3 or something. Ah, 4.5, why, why not try it? Recache it, calculate it. And then just see what the sim got going for us. Maybe they're too long now. Probably, probably too long. But they're now just uh, sticking out. Ah, maybe that's even that's probably even fine. So let's change our diffuse material to maybe dark black. So you can now see that they basically all disappeared, but you still got some some details going on. 
of like soft matches. Yeah, I got some details. You know what? Let's um let's empty the cache again, empty it and let's do length 6.5. Let's try this. Why not try that? See if it's too extreme or not. And recalculate it. I think that works even better. It's a bit extreme on the right side. It's very fuzzy. But I think it works to bring out those details. Yeah, I think that works just fine. So let's adjust our scene a bit. Let's bring that plane up. Like that, maybe. So we got some sky going. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, you could, of course, like change your scene material or maybe even um, go into Octane Hair and place that above this. If you're running 2020, that is. And you can hit the node editor, plug in an RGB spectrum. Let's make it a bit darker. Put that into the albedo. Um, and then you could, of course, copy it. Oh, my bad. Copy this and do like a dark red to the specular melanin black and then you can play around with those settings see what you get um index of reflection uh refraction my bad there's a lot of ways you could um drive that fur up or the fuzz but for now i'll just stick probably with the black we had earlier and then i'll just create this maybe see if those stitches work well in chrome it does look nice and let's just for the sake of it apply that to the teeth hell yeah and now it's just about you playing around with your scene playing around with the hair modifier um uh, next time we'll tackle some easy uh like stitch displacements for the mask using substance um, tackling the same project just going over from marvelous into uh, substance then just drawing a few things and using those textures as displacement maps um, but yeah that's it for now i hope you learned something i hope this helps you uh, for whatever you're planning on doing um, i know it's not a perfect fix uh, it requires a bit of playing around to get a look that's good for whatever you're going for um but it does work and it does get its uh it does get its job done so it's fine for now and for me at least um, when using something like this uh yeah just keep an eye out for the next tutorial um subscribe if, if you haven't already and if you thought this was helpful uh i hope i always say this but i hope to be more active in the future um, but i got a lot of things going on one of which will be my upcoming merch drop uh, I think it's like in eight or nine days. I haven't uh, shared the specifics yet, but here's a sneak preview for you guys. Um, haven't shared any of, haven't shared all of this yet, uh, and won't be for the next few days. But if you sticked around to the end, uh, yeah, this is what you can await from the upcoming drop worldwide shipping, of course. Um, I also want to make it very accessible for my uh. US fan base, so I'm paying 50% shipping out of my own pocket so you guys don't end up putting something in your cart and then um, realizing, oh god damn, it's like a million dollars shipping, I'm out. So to not have that happen, I'll be paying the own, uh, I'll be paying 50% of those uh, international shipping costs that go outside of the EU 
And yeah, stay tuned for the next one and thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Maybe hit my email or hit my Instagram. I try to answer as much as possible. I can't always get to everything because things are quite overwhelming for me. Um, but yeah, I'll try my best. Thanks.